So this video is part of our ongoing series called Study Skills, where we show you different learning techniques with examples so that you can apply them yourself. Okay, I tried just about every memory technique out there, and since I've been through medical school, I've had a lot of time to experiment. I came across the fundamentals of how memory and the brain work from the books Limitless and Moonwalking with Einstein, and I learned that almost all memory techniques can be boiled down to three simple steps. Step one is to visualize. Our brains remember images much better than numbers or words. Like when I say apple, you instantly think of the red fruit, or maybe you think of the iPhone. But either way, your brain is not thinking of the text A-P-P-L-E. So step one is to take everything you need to memorize and turn it into an image. Whether it's a list of drugs, or steps to a chemical reaction, or I don't know, dates to a battle, everything can become an image. For example, the number nine to me is a cat because a cat has nine lives. If something is uncommon or rare, then to me, it's a zebra. If you know what I'm talking about, comment below. But for a more complicated example, let's say I wanted to remember that labetalol is a blood pressure medicine that's safe to use during pregnancy. Labetalol to me is a betta fish laughing out loud. So I could imagine that a betta fish is laughing at a baby. And to take this a step further, if I have the scene drawn in a specific location, like in the corner of a mind map, then I'd be using visual spatial memory. Step two is to structure. There are many ways to do this because the brain is good at remembering things like stories, acronyms, mnemonics, alliteration, rhymes, and so on. So what we want to do once we've turned all of our info into images is to link the images together using some sort of structure. In med school, we had to memorize the cranial nerves, which control our senses. So like one does smell, two does vision, and so on. So for example, once I've converted all the cranial nerves into images, I could then imagine each of those images on each of my knuckles. That's called the knuckle method. Or I can imagine the images in specific areas in my house or in my bedroom. That's the mind palace. Or I can tell a story about the images and have them interact with each other in some sort of order. For example, once upon a time, a nose gave birth to two children, a Cyclops and Sleepy, and so on and so on. That's called the story method or the link method. And the best part about this is you only need to remember the first item and the story should just naturally flow. There's also this cool program called sketchy.com. And no, this is not sponsored by them. They're just a really good example of what I'm talking about. They take all these complicated medical topics and turn them into visual storyboards for us, and then they tell us a narrative to make memorizing these things like drugs, bacteria, and diseases so much easier. Another tip for linking is to chunk things together. Like normally we don't think of a phone number as 10 individual digits, we chunk them together so that the brain only has to process three individual units. Another tip is to make the stories interesting. And what do our brains find interesting? Action, humor, and sex. So for example, don't just turn an image into a ninja. You wanna make it vivid, like tell a story about how the violent ninja would assassinate people and make it sexual, like how he would use naked women to beat his toughest opponents. And step three is repetition. Whenever we practice recalling things from memory, that knowledge becomes stronger. In med school, my favorite way to use repetition was through flashcards because flashcards utilize multiple strategies that boost our memory. Active recall, space repetition, and interleaving. Each of those could be their own entire videos. So if you're unfamiliar with these topics, I'll link them here or in the description. Another tip for using flashcards is to put the images and stories you made from steps one and two onto your flashcards to make the most out of this entire memory system. So now I'm gonna do a walkthrough of all the tips that we've mentioned so far and try to memorize the shoulder muscles. And I'm gonna to try to not go too deep on the medical stuff, so focus more on my thought process rather than the info itself. So for this particular exam, there are four muscles. I need to know their names. I need to know how each muscle moves the arm. And I need to know what tests to perform. Like if a patient comes in complaining of shoulder pain, I need to know how to maneuver the arm to figure out which muscle is injured. So that's 12 different things I gotta memorize. But I can chunk things together and reduce the total amount of things I need to memorize by just taking more time to understand the big picture concepts. So an important concept here is that if the muscle raises the arm, then an injury to the muscle makes it hard to raise the arm. And the test you want to do applies pressure against raising the arm. Basically what I'm saying is that column two and column three are opposites of each other. So if I memorize one column, then I know the opposite is the other column. So I've essentially chunked those two columns together, reducing 12 things down to eight. Now we can start to memorize. First is turning things into images. Terry's minor to me is Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond. 
And a side note here is that we all have unique ways to visualize things based on our unique interests. Personally, I use a lot of images from comics and anime, but you can use what's most memorable to you. Anyways, I've turned the muscles and their tests into images. The test for the Teres Minor is abduction and internal rotation, which looks like you're throwing a baseball. So the image to me is a baseball. The test for the supraspinatus looks like you're emptying a cup. So the image is spilled coffee. The test for the infraspinatus looks like you're backhand slapping someone. So to me, it's a slap. And the test for the subscapularis looks like you're arresting someone. So it's a pair of handcuffs. Then looking here, I can actually chunk these two muscles together because they share the same root word spinatus, meaning spine. And I wanted an image that would reference the spine. So I chose Professor X because his origin story is that he got shot in the spine. And then I can chunk even further by combining the images of the muscles and the images of the tests. So now this image of Terry throwing a baseball to me represents multiple pieces of information. It represents the Terry's minor muscle. The way that you test for that muscle is to make the patient do a baseball throwing motion. And the opposite of that motion is how the Terry's minor muscle moves the arm. And likewise, I've chunked all the other images of the muscles with their corresponding tests. Step two is to link the images together. And going off our example here, I could tell a story. Terry threw a baseball at the professor's spine, causing him to spill the coffee on himself. It hurt so much that he accidentally slapped Sub-Zero, they got in a fight, and then Sub-Zero got arrested. It's a little over the top, I'd say, but remember, you want to try to make it as memorable as possible with things like action, violence, humor, sex. But notice that this story has been now chunked down to only three plot points, yet in my head, it represents the original 12 pieces of information. And you can really do this for hundreds of pieces of info, right? This is how someone would memorize pi to the nth degree, or memorize an entire deck of cards in exact order after seeing it only once. So for step three, I'll put this story into a space repetition flashcard. And it doesn't have to even be drawn out on the flashcard since I use a story that flows. So I can just put the first character as a memorization cue and I would run through the rest of the story in my head. Hopefully you saw my thought process here. Understand first, memorize second, and always be looking for ways to chunk things together. If you want some tips on how to understand and structure information, then I recommend you check out this quick tutorial right here. I'll see you there.